since before college. I always wanted to explore the unknown and go deeper than everybody else. I would find myself going down to this 100 feet mark and sort of looking beyond. I knew the coral reef didn't just stop there. Because those reefs are outside of the reach of most people that dive shallow, we don't know much about them and everybody assumed that there were no human impacts on those deeper reefs. For a long time, all of our research interests have focused on how deep reefs might actually help shallow reefs and how they might aid in the recovery of shallow reef areas. The deep reef refugia hypothesis it kind of rests in two major assumptions. One is that there is a lot of overlap in species composition between the deep and the shallow reefs. And the other one is that those deep reefs are immune from threats. So we went into the field in several locations throughout the Pacific and the Atlantic, and we did a visual counts. We laid out transects on the reef and we counted which species were actually there. And we compared the data that we got in situ in the field to the data that was published on the literature we saw that the overlap is much smaller than people thought it was. So we set off 60, 70, 75% overlap between shallow and deep reefs. We saw that a very small percentage, less than 5% of all species that we looked at, they actually occur from shallow to deep. What we saw was that those deep reefs, they are unique. They're very different from shallow reefs. They are a completely different community. We're finding very different species of corals and fish there, many of them that are completely new to science. And the other thing that we also discovered is that some of the impacts that are affecting the shallow reefs are also affecting the deep reefs. Everything from overfishing to sedimentation to pollution, we found a lot of plastics in reefs that nobody's seen before at 100, 150 meters depth. There's a lot of fishing lines everywhere. We didn't see many big fish in those deep reefs. So it's a little bit disappointing because the shallow reefs are in really, really big trouble right now. They're being hit by a number of different impacts. And we kind of hoped that we would find that these deep reefs are actually a refuge, but they are definitely not. I think shallow reefs are very resilient. There's little pockets everywhere in the Caribbean, in the Pacific, that we see with a lot of still healthy and thriving reefs. And I think they will survive in those pockets and when conditions go back to normal, hopefully when we get our stuff together and we act about it, they will slowly return and go back to the way they were a few hundred years ago. Even though a lot of my past research has focused on this connection between shallow and deep reef areas, I've obviously become more and more interested in deep reefs for their own right. And that's because they harbor this unique biodiversity. It's a very strong motivator to make sure that my research counts and that I'm actually contributing to ways that allow us to better protect these ecosystems. What keeps me motivated is the optimism I see in people. Everybody wants to, at the end of the day, see coral reefs as a thriving ecosystem and something that continues to the future. So just the positive attitude of people when we talk about coral reefs is something that gives me hope.